All right, welcome back to another flight with the uh, Adam RC Swordfish. If you've uh, been tuning into my other videos, I uh, just want to thank you for doing that. And I uh, hope that you find the content of these videos uh, helpful and, and uh, enjoyable to watch. So today, I think what we're going to do is fly out towards the uh, dirt oval racetrack that I had mentioned. Um, we'll head out that way and, and see see what we can see. So I did get a question about uh, my video receiver. I am running the Walk Snell Avatar video receiver. That's uh, basically I'm using it kind of standalone and not with a set of goggles. So uh, I basically have uh, that mounted on a little tripod and I have two uh, another question that I received was what, what type of antennas are you running on that? And I have two uh, triple feed patch antennas on there. And those antennas, as I have mentioned in the past, those antennas uh, do allow you to run either left hand or right hand uh, circular polarization. So anyway, um, I'll put a link down in the description for, for those uh, particular antennas that I'm running on my uh, video receiver. So this is the path that we kind of go out. Again, this is uh, one of those evenings where there was very, very little wind and uh, just really calm conditions. So that always makes for a really smooth, smooth flight. In my last video, I mentioned that I was wanting to work towards getting my um, artificial horizon to where when I pan my camera left or right, that that artificial horizon um, basically goes away. So typically <clears throat> when you set this up, it will uh, follow the, that artificial horizon. If you move out to the wing, uh, paying your, paying your servo to the wing, then, then that artificial horizon goes with it. So you can see right here, uh, that artificial horizon is now gone. So that's something that you can set up in iNav. Um, I know that you can also do that in Ardu Pilot. Uh, I'm not familiar with Ardu Pilot, so I can't explain how to do that. But basically with iNav, uh, what I've done is I've gone in and uh, I have a default, which is my default settings that you see here on the screen. Um, you set that up and I copied that over. I used, uh, there's an OSD tool that you can go out there and get. Um, <clears throat> it's online you can basically uh, copy your OSD settings and then put it into another alternate slot. It basically, you put your, your code in there and it will take that code, rewrite it and set everything up. <clears throat> and it'll set all the parameters up so that you can put it into like the alternate one, I believe is what I have this set at online. So, once you have that done, you can go into your, your modes in iNav and there is a section in there for OSD configuration and you can go in there and basically whenever the uh, artificial horizon is in the center of the aircraft, when my servo is centered, then it'll display the first default uh, OSD. And then when I pan out to either side of center, left or right wing, then uh, you can see here that it, it just goes away. And you have to set up that alternate uh, channel a little bit differently. Once you get that brought into iNav, you'll just go in and, and tick off your, under the OSD settings, you'll just tick off for that alternate uh, OSD, you'll tick off the um, artificial horizon so that it doesn't show up. And then again, you just go ahead and set up your mode switch. I have mine on my left slider on the side of my uh, radio. I run a Radio Master TX16 S2. And I just go in there and, and, and set it up on my, on my left slider. So here we are. You can see the Amazon plant there to the right. Um, we've talked about that a little bit before. And then over my left wing there, you can see the uh, local dirt track. They were not running races this evening that uh, I flew out here. So again, maybe one of these days we will uh, try to try to make a flight around that when they're actually racing. That's going to be a, a timing thing for me and races will have to be going on. The, the, the wind will have to be calm and 
and then of course I'll just have to to be free to go do that. So, but that that might be kind of fun fun to watch. So, this particular track has been around for for many many years. Um, they have just recently, in the past couple of years, started fixing it up and put in new bleachers and grandstands. They have some new owners and just the whole property they've kind of gone through and, and cleaned it up. So um, it's, it's, it's a great improvement for a little racetrack there. And I don't live too far away from this, this track. So it's about, uh, as you can see there, not quite three miles from, from our takeoff point. So you can see, I still haven't changed those antennas. Uh, my video tr or my, uh, my video transmitter antennas so I, I still need to get that task done and and uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to to mess with this this stuff lately so hopefully soon still been working on my uh he wing t1 ranger so really anxious to get that in the air but again it's just one of those things trying to find time to work on it and be able to go out and do a maiden on it so the other thing that i talked about a little bit was my OSD, the fonts that I'm using, um, having to overlay those for those that are familiar. When you do a flight <clears throat> with the uh, Walk Snell system, it records the SRT files. So I this footage is actually off the, the video receiver and not the transmitter. I've, I've found and, and learned that when you uh, run the video transmitter, the uh, all the parameters that you see here on the screen want to start blinking. And so I've, I found that if you use or record to the video receiver instead, you will get uh, a better recording without so much blinking. So that's the way I try to record. The downside of that is, is obviously you're only going to get, uh, the recording is only be, going to be as good as, as whatever your signal coming in is. So, but... I've been pretty fortunate that I have pretty pretty good signal uh, coming in. I actually had somebody comment asking me what uh, they they thought this was the best analog signal that they've ever seen, and and I I kind of had to explain to them that this is not analog, that it's HD, and they had made the comment that they 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 thought that this was was almost to the point of being um, an action camera recording, so. Um, there's a little bit of tweaking I'd still like to do. I need to kind of back off, I think, my sharpness a little bit. I do get a little bit of a, uh, some artifacts, I think. You can notice that uh, when I get over those green fields, especially on the way out uh, on this particular trip, if you look real close, those fields uh, almost looks kind of blurry. And I think that might because I need to pull back my sharpness a little bit. So, But anyway, going back to uh, uh, the font here, I am using the Sneaky uh, FPV font, and uh, I told you that I have Mac computers. I've always had Mac computers just because I did a lot of still photography uh, back in the day, and so Mac computers have always worked good for that, and I've kind of just uh, adopted them. Sometimes that's not so good for some of the RC stuff that we do, is they do have some programs that are written more towards Windows. So. And I don't actually really own a Windows computer anymore. I have a really, really old laptop, but it, it's almost uh, to the point where it's not usable. So I did some reading on the, the GitHub page and found out that this OSD tool, I, I can run it on a Mac, but you do have to go in and, and put some programs in. And the instructions in there were not that great. So I did a Google search for it, and I was uh, lucky enough to find out that there is a website that you can go to that uh, it's called Homebrew, and I, I just watched somebody's video, and uh, they they taught me how to get uh, this Homebrew to to load this program. Uh, I think it it deals with the FF uh, MPG, I think is what they call it. But uh, once I got that loaded, then I have now been able to. Um, get these fonts loaded on my Mac and I can do all my editing here on this Mac and not have to worry about the Windows machine. So it does make things a lot, a lot easier for, for me. Here you might be able to see what I was talking about where I get some artifact on the green field below me. Uh, it almost looks like it's um, 
maybe not blurred out, but it, it just looks a little bit blurry. And, and I think maybe pulling that, <clears throat> pulling that uh, sharpness back might help with that. So if, uh, if anybody has experience with that, let me know. So I think I'll spin around here and get lined up for a landing. Um, just another real great flight out to the racetrack and back and and uh, the calm weather i just i just love flying in it so i hope that everybody does uh appreciate these videos and, and maybe gets a little bit of something out of it i i know it's a lot of me just talking and narrating the flight uh kind of pointing out things along the way but uh, people seem to like it i've been i've been getting some views so uh as i said if i if i can continue to get some views here and some likes and comments then I'll go ahead and, and try to try to keep making them. So um, again, uh, the field I, I land in is kind of rough, so I always tend to have a rough landing and spin it around. But uh, fortunately, it's uh, getting on the ground and it doesn't look like it's tearing up the the airframe too much. So here we we come in for for a landing and uh, and uh, get her get her put back down on the ground. So. Again, I do really, really appreciate it that uh, that you do tune in and watch watch these videos. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.